Welcome to this post-game media edition of Talking Hoosier Baseball. With Connor Foley still not ready to go from injury, Indiana had a bullpen day on Friday against Rutgers ace Justin Cinebaldi. A trio of arms combined to put up ace numbers with 3.0 innings of work each, while the Hoosier hitters worked Cinebaldi, led by Joey Brincheski, who went 2-for-4 with a 3-run homer in the first inning. Julian Tangini allowed no runs in his three innings of work, and that included not allowing an inherited runner to score from third, with no one out in the fourth inning. The media spoke with Brincheski, Tangini, and head coach Jeff Mercer following the game. Joey, um, you had a couple of really nice swings against a really good left-handed pitcher today. Uh, kind of work, walk us through those at bats, and what were you able to do to, to get the, to get a good swing in? Yeah, props to him. Uh, he pitched his butt off today. He went seven innings, I think, or whatever. But um, I mean, kind of sitting on fastball timing, really. Then uh, I knew I had a good slider, and I was waiting for it. Then um, I was able to drive it today. So. Obviously, the bat's been there for a little bit, I guess. It seems like uh, the glove's been improving a little bit at first. What's kind of gone into that evolution? Yeah, I've been I've been working really hard over there. Me and Coach Mercer have been, he's been uh, bringing me every day over there at first, so coaching me up. Then, uh, and really, I kind of thought about when I used to play middle infield and third base and how I would get mad when the first baseman wouldn't pick the ball. So uh, just trying to help him, help him out, because I know how crucial it is to keep the ball low when you're playing the middle infield. Julian, yeah, obviously you came in in a tough spot um, and you managed to not give up any inherited runs. Uh, kind of just work, walk us through what you what you did there. Yeah, so I was just trying to build off of Keeser, kind of got the ball rolling. He gave us a really good start. So I just want to go in there and make competitive pitches and, you know, hopefully not have, have no one score by the end of it. Um, but just make competitive pitches and just be in the zone and fill it up. And I fell behind on the first two guys, but... After that, I made the adjustment and was able to attack and get ahead and get out of the inning. You think it's the slider in particular that was working well? Yeah, I mean, slider, curveball, just in the zone, um, executing chase margins, stuff we've talked about before, and uh, sticking to the plan. You know, plan had a really good plan going into it and just trusting it and attacking it, and that was successful. Joey, I'll go back to you. Home run from the right side of the plate today. Are you more comfortable on either side of the plate, or it's... Uh, I, you know, I've been doing it for so long, so, I mean, it's pretty normal at this point. But, I mean, I was a natural lefty, so I might need to take some more right, right-handed right at-bats um, every once in a while. Julian, Rucker is one of the best offenses in the conference. How important was it for you guys to hold them at bay tonight? Yeah, I mean, we kind of treat every game the same. Like, we want to go out, we want to compete, and we want to give, give, uh, give our best stuff. You know, we want to attack with our best stuff. We want to, you know, do it at the plate. Um, and it's just putting together those competitive pitches, putting together those competitive at bats. It's just, it's what happens when you stick to a plan and you execute a plan. So, how much momentum does tonight's game give you for the, tonight's win give you for the rest of the weekends? I got it. All right. <laughs> uh, it's huge. I mean, just feeding off of the energy from tonight. I mean, the fans, the uh, the energy in the dugout. It was just electric. Uh, the plays. It's easy when you're pitching and guys are making just amazing plays behind you, and you can just kind of keep keep that energy going and having guys behind you in the dugout is just it's unbelievable it's so fun to play uh have and and, and play with so uh cal got a really big hit hit tonight can you just talk about uh what how, how he's been developing yeah um Mer says it all the time work while you wait and he's i'll tell you what he's been in the cages every day he's been working his butt off and i'm just so happy for him really Coach, obviously, uh, their you know their lefty was actually doing quite well today. But yeah. you guys did two things, which is a you jumped on him early, yeah. and then kind of wore him down eventually at the end. Uh, what how how did they kind of? What's your assessment of how your hitters accomplished that today? I, I was thrilled. The, the Cinnabolic kids, he's a warrior, and and you could. I hope he's okay because like there's, there's only so many guys that you watch from from the other team that you, you look at and like that guy's a warrior, and you respect you respect his guts. You know he's he's got some ride and run to it where he's throwing fastballs in and then working the, the breaking ball off of it and the changeup as well and the 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 kid from Minnesota the Whitgriff kid was really similar and they I'm sure they watched the video and tried to follow a similar pitch plan. Um, he, he wasn't quite as firm as the Whitgriff kid last week, so I think that probably helped a little bit. Um, you know you look at 
we battled there in the first. Joey gets down 0-2, and and he was in between timing on one of the fastballs. He gets back in the count, gets back to a 2-2, and he gets back on time, and then he hangs a slider for, for the homer. So you, we always talk about when you're, you're down 0-2 to get back to 2-2. Do anything you can to get back to 2-2 because the 2-2 pitch is typically a get-me-over because nobody wants to go 0-2 to 3-2, and then he might walk the guy. So it's like just fight to get back to 2-2. You typically have a decent pitch to hit, and Joey did. And we battled hard, and you know Stadler hammers that ball into the wind, and you know, we were, were super tough. And and uh, you know the thing about about him when I watched, like I watched last week against Purdue, is he really got to the edges early uh, in 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 the game. He's in, he's out, he's locating, and then like anybody does when he gets tired, there was a lot more there was a lot more pitch in the middle of the plate, and uh, and that's pretty typical. We talked about before, like we have to wear him down, and so he's going to leave pitches in the middle of the plate late. If you can wear him down, and that's what we did. We got him late, and then you know you, you hit the Cephas that kiss the big homer, and and you're able to kind of pull away a little bit. But the big thing for us was to stay on time, to, to understand the pitch plan, the pitch package, uh, to to not be in between, and then you have to add pitches. You have to add pitches and add pitches, and then when he gets tired and there's going to be pitches in the middle of the plate, we have to do damage. We have to do damage. We're, you're not going to line up three singles in a row to score a run against a guy like that. So a walk and a single or a base hit, and someone's gonna have to hit a double or a homer, and you're just gonna have to get one out of here. And so we, we did that, you know, two, two, two times off of him, and then Mitchell gets one off the righty. So elevate pitch counts and get a, get a, get a good pitch in the middle of the plate, and then you're gonna have to do damage with it. And uh, we were able to do that just because you just, you kept forcing him to compete and add pitches to it. I don't know if he ended up at uh, 102. So. You know, it, it, we, we were really tough. We were really, really tough because he, he was tough as hell and he was a warrior tonight. You mentioned previously kind of getting on Joey about his defense at first base. Yeah. Some make some good picks tonight, I guess. What's kind of gone into his improvement there? A, a ton of work and being held to a high standard. And and that's, this isn't, that's not a pat on my back. It's a pat on Joey's back. And I've said this multiple times, but the kids that are the best players allow you to coach them hard. They come from families that have that, that, that have that have held them to a high standard. He's got older brothers that play college baseball. His dad pushed him. His high school coach, great program, really pushed him. And so Joey can be told the truth. And, and Joey, you're not good enough defensively. You're, you're killing us. You're killing us. And we've talked about that a ton. And I've been really candid with him. And sure, I'm candid in general, so that's not necessarily a, a, a new theme. Um, but he has to get his feelings hurt. And he just works and works and works. And then he's played. So now, he, you know, he's, I don't know, he's probably played 25, 30 games now. And, and so enough time has gone by where he wants to win and he wants to help the team and the way that he obviously helps the team offensively a ton, but he was he was hurting us uh, tremendously defensively. And so his investment, his hard work, and then his ability to be coached and held to a high standard without getting his feelings hurt, and you're starting to see him really blossom into a complete player. You know, they'll, they'll throw up the line and the tag, the picks, you know, all those things. He had a huge win at Ball State with the, the game-winning runs coming in. If he didn't pick it, we lose the game. Uh, and so watching him grow defensively is very rewarding you know, as a coach because you're watching a guy that, that allows you to coach him, doesn't get his feelings hurt, is a tough kid, and, and just uh, refuses to, to be poor in, in a portion of the game that's hurting the team. And, uh, and now he's really helping us, right? You, you've watched Brock Tibbetts save us time after time the last couple of years, uh, and Joey's starting to do those similar things where the game just gets a lot shorter when you have a first baseman that's cleaning up mistakes and making picks and and, and then he gets to where he can extend his defensive radius and get out of that, out of his funnel and go get some balls. And the game just really starts to shrink uh, when you got a leadoff out instead of a guy on first base or second base with a, with a fourth row and no pick. So um, he's just, he's worked his tail off. He's worked really hard. Uh, he's out here doing picks all the time. You know, we'll have the infielders, like we'll have like a bad throw around where we just try to throw his terrible throws and as we can. And, uh, and he gets frustrated, he'd get frustrated and get mad. And, but, you know, it's like the good thing is I, I played first base. And so it's like, no, man, you're not doing anything that the rest of us didn't do. Yeah, and we played on, on fields that were like the surface of the moon. So it was we had old dirt fields. We were getting hit in the face. We play on the on carpet. So he, he's doing an awesome job, and I'm very proud of him. Coach, you touched on Cal Sepsic before. Joey told us to use the motto, work while you wait. Yeah. Uh, talk more about Cal's advancements to get his name in the lineup. Yes. Yeah. Big nights ago. There's, a, there's a lot of guys that work hard, but there's nobody that works harder than Cal. And he's stubborn. He's stubborn as a mule. Good players are stubborn. And, and I mean that in a good way. Like, he's stubborn to change his swing. He's stubborn to, to leave the fact that he knows he's a good player. And he's stubborn to the fact, like, I'm, he's not going to quit working. And that's a good thing. Because once you, once you get on the same page with that guy and you guys can work together and make adjustments together, 
then then he's so talented. I mean, you're, 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 his dad was a professional player. Cal's a very talented player. He missed a ton of time with Tommy John, then hurt his hip. Um, but I just keep trying to stick him in there in situations that are the right matchup for him. And I just keep telling him, I'm going to keep sticking you in there until you figure it out because you're capable. Uh, and, and uh, you know, somebody had said something about, um, I can't remember, I think it was, it was one of the position guys, maybe Josh Pine, had said something about like, hey, do you think Cal should do this or that? Or what do you, We got to talk to the guys all the time. And I was like, Cal's in the game to hit this next pitch for a two-run homer. That's why he's in the game. And he hit the next pitch for a two-run homer. Uh, so, you know, he's, he's, he's working on his swing. He's working on his approach. But my goodness, he is so talented. And he works his tail off. Uh, and, he, and he's stubborn in a good way that once he figures it out, he won't leave it, and, and, and he will be, he, he will he will go down as a special hitter at Indiana if he keeps going the way that he's going. And I'm confident that he will. I believe in him completely. Your pitching staff, uh, you know, three guys split yeah. the game pretty evenly. Pretty much gave you an ace type performance on yes. a Friday. Yeah, we pitched it awesome. We made an error on the first play of the game, which is not the way you want to start it, uh, with the guy making this your first conference start like that. But after that, we played good defense. Then we played great defense, right? We, we made good plays. Then we made great plays. We got confident. We got aggressive. And we really supported the pitching staff tonight. And I talked to the guys about it afterwards. How much better is a pitching staff when you make some great plays around them and you shrink the game like that, which is what we did. Uh, but Keister coming out and getting the start. You know, Purdue ran three lefties at him last week. Fastball in, off speed away. Uh, it was a good matchup for him. And he went, next, to his credit, he executed the play in uh, to perfection. And then by the second time to the lineup, you know, they're going to make an adjustment. They're a good offense. They're hitting 330 for a reason as a team or whatever they're hitting. So they're going to make an adjustment, but it gave us just enough of a lift that we're able to then go to Julian, which is a completely different look, right? Predominant spin, uh, 10 miles an hour harder on the fastball, not 10, but probably eight miles an hour harder on the fastball, totally different look. And then we're able to, to go to rise to, to, to finish it off. Uh, so Keister gave us a huge start. Uh, and then Julian, I mean, that's a big inning waiting to happen, right? That's a five. We've seen it. That's a five, six, seven run inning waiting to happen, waiting to blow up. And, and Julian came in and, and knuckled down uh, and gave us probably the most critical inning of the game uh, and, and then extended it out and gave us what we needed. And then Rice came in and did what Rice, what Rice does, uh, which is kind of like be your Swiss Army knife. If you need me to start, I'll start, close, close, and just pitch the most meaningful innings, have the toughest guy out there. So to hold that offense to three runs, uh, on a Friday when, when you don't have Foley today and, and you're trying to piece it together with the wind blowing out to left 20 miles an hour is a terrific accomplishment. And it's about execution. It's about growth throughout the course of the year. Coach Clint did a great job with those guys. Just keep getting better, keep adjusting. Uh, and then it's about those guys. They, they got thrown into the fire and now they're growing up and they're executing so much better. Uh, and, you, and you're really pleased with them. But it's also about playing great defense behind them. You, you have to go the rest against a team like this, they're going to put the ball in play. And it's going to be a long weekend ahead of us. But if you'll go make some great plays and shrink the game, it's deflating. It's frustrating. It's deflating. Uh, and it also gives your team a lot of energy and, and, and pumps your guys up. So, And it also gives your pitchers confidence to go and execute. Hey, if I give up a soft contact here because I'm trying to go in and my third baseman comes and makes a play on a slow chopper, I have a lot more confidence to make that play, or to make my next pitch. And so I, I just uh, I, I can't be more complimentary of Coach Glant and the pitchers today for what they were able to do to execute that play, and they were phenomenal. I wanted to ask about Foley. Do you have any update on where he's at physically? And then, I guess, if he's not available, how do you manage the rest of the weekend with not having that workforce? Yeah, uh, I, he's definitely feeling better. He, I think he's feeling better. He's not feeling great yet. Um, and we won't do anything until he does until he does feel good enough to go. Um, so it, 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 he's active this weekend, but for what that means, I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I would say probably not. I would say probably not this weekend. Hopefully next weekend we can we can get him back out there and, and, and kind of uh, work back up to a pitch count again. Uh, but it's just going to be it's just going to be kind of like today, where we're cutting the game up. I would say uh, maybe some more one one one, maybe not three three three, maybe more one one one, and then someone's going to have to catch fire and go give us a give us a three or four or five inning uh, run at some point. Obviously Bothwell makes you feel a little bit better, and he's going to have to give us five or six kind of. Come hell or high water, he's going to have to give us five or six, and the offense is going to have to produce. And we're going to have to play good plays. Um, but you got obviously you got Burr and, and Vogel, and ADP has been a lot better, and you know Crafty has been better, and so you're just going to have to kind of piece it together. 
you know, I think uh, <clears throat> I, I still I'm still a big believer in Seth Bennis. He's been a lot better recently. I just he's talented and he's capable. He's he's been a lot more competitive. He's got a good changeup. The curveball's a lot better. So I think there's an avenue for him as well. But it's just, it's just gonna take you have to chop it up. You know, I told Julian, get in the ice tank, baby, because you got to get back on Sunday and spin some more breaking balls and and, uh, and and then figure it out. But if we'll play defense like that, if we'll compete like that, if we'll execute to a plan, there is a path for us to continue to have success. If I told you before the game today that you know, Keisha was going to start and, and uh, we're going to give up three runs on a Friday on a day like today against that offense, I don't know that that uh, anybody outside of the room would right, rightfully so probably believe it. Um, and so there's going to have to be other guys to do the same thing. The Hoosiers and Scarlet Knights are back at it Saturday at 2 p.m. See you at the BART.